Now for another spectacle, but let's go a bit higher in the sky. In April, we saw a spectacular Northern Lights display deep into the lower 48. And tonight, we may see the aurora in some of the northern states once again. Hayden Planetarium astronomer Joe Rayo joins us now to discuss. Now, Joe, this is really exciting. It is one of my bucket list items to see the aurora borealis. What states can expect to see the northern lights tonight? Well, you know, it's uh, kind of tough. Sometimes we, we call this space weather prediction. It's based upon uh, particles which have been shot out of the sun, subatomic particles from a solar flare. And actually, we've had several different solar flares erupt on the sun over the last several days. We may have a possibility of seeing this tonight. I think, however, there may be a better chance tomorrow night because we had a couple of rather moderately strong flares that erupted on the sun yesterday afternoon. And that material is headed for us and based upon forecast may arrive sometime late tomorrow and into tomorrow evening. So if you are out and about, again, normally this is not visible uh, across the United States. It's normally confined to Alaska, northern Canada, Iceland. But when we get enough of a potent flare activity, it gets pushed. The visibility of the uh, aurora gets pushed southward into the United States. So if you're out and about either tonight or especially so tomorrow evening, take a look at that northern sky. And uh, indeed, you may see uh, some bands or rays or uh, sometimes even looking sort of like curtains in the sky wavering back and forth different colors, white, uh, greenish, bluish, sometimes even reddish uh, in coloration. And again, uh, the uh, aurora visibility is going to be highly dependent upon how the Earth, uh, these particles interact with the Earth's upper atmosphere, known as the ionosphere, mm -hmm. and whether or not it's, it's, it's potent enough to produce a display like what we're seeing right now. We had a grand display on April 23rd. Aurora was visible all the way as far south as California and Arizona and Texas, I, I cannot tell you whether or not that's going to happen again either tonight or tomorrow night because there's a lot of uncertainty. But certainly if there is a chance, you want to periodically check the northern skies tonight and again tomorrow night just to, just to check out and see whether or not you'll have a chance of seeing these. So, Joe, you know, you talk about, you know, how rare this is. The forecasting for the Aurora Borealis is actually quite difficult. Uh, one of the reasons being, you know, these particles, they're being ejected from the sun. And so the speed of light gets involved. Now we're talking a lot of equations and math. So do you know about how we forecast uh, to see, you know, these time frames? The particles, generally speaking, are shot out of the flares that are erupt on the sun at speeds of, now get this now, two to three million miles per hour. That's why after an eruption occurs, it generally takes about, oh, only about two or three days. And remember, the sun is 93 million miles away, but those particles come roaring down the path, so to speak. And if the, it is occurring on a side that's facing the earth, uh, the side of the sun that's facing the earth, then the uh, complex calculations that are done by the Space Environment Center in Boulder, Colorado, uh, trying to time these out. Sometimes they're on target, but sometimes the particles arrive earlier than expected, sometimes later than expected. So the best we can do is just simply tell everybody that the visibility will be uh, possibly tonight or again tomorrow night. But one big problem for all of us, Jane, uh, across especially the northern tier of the United States is the fire activity mm -hmm. that's going on mm -hmm. in parts of British Columbia and Alberta. The smoke, the airborne smoke that is wafting high into the atmosphere is uh, being directed toward us, toward the uh, central and northern states, and causing the skies to look rather hazy. And that haziness may unfortunately either uh, diminish the view of the aurora or maybe squelch it out entirely so that's unfortunately a handicap that we'll be up against if you're looking for the aurora tonight or tomorrow night are those hazy skies that are being caused again by that forest fire activity, the smoke activity that's in the atmosphere from that over the next couple of nights. Yeah, Joe, we'll have to keep our fingers crossed. Have to wait and see how it all shapes up. Joe Rayo from the Hayden Planetarium. Astronomer, thank you for joining us. And I'm excited. I'm, I'm hoping that I'll get a nice glimpse of it. <laughs> well, if we don't get it tonight or tomorrow night, the sun is reaching solar maximum, a lot more flares, a lot more sunspots in the next one or two years. So if we blow the uh, chance tonight or tomorrow night,
I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.